Hello everyone, this is my review for Monday Night Raw on September 22nd, 2014. And, you know, I can't say it was a horrible Raw by any stretch of the imaginations, but it wasn't all that good either. It was pretty much a continuation of storylines. I mean, there was some really good points. The best portions of the show were probably the uh, moments with Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, John Cena, Kane, and Randy Orton in there. Not necessarily the matches, just kind of the segments and the story building between uh, Seth Rollins and uh, Dean Ambrose's storyline. And then you got to interject a little bit of John Cena because of, you know, Seth Rollins causing a DQ in the championship match the night before. So they're at least playing with the continuity there. I like the opening segment between the two, uh, between them. And then, of course, it's seeming like they chased Seth Rollins out of the building only for him to return a little bit later. Also with the, uh, uh, you know, instead of the authority throwing out Dean Ambrose, they just locked him inside of a closet for the rest of the evening. Uh, the only pro the only problem I had with that entire thing was how the heck does he get into the box or underneath that little table that they had out there? Because in all senses. Uh, they obviously didn't grab it from that closet. If they did grab that table from the closet that he was in, inside of there, they would have realized he was gone. And uh, there was, a uh, like in every way that they seemed to have it in there, they had he had no way out. He had no way of getting around anything. Uh, so it just didn't make sense for him to be underneath the table. It would have made more sense if he breaks out of the... Uh, breaks out but past the security and then comes out and makes a save with John Cena a little bit later on during the his match with Randy Orton, which of course we got to see for the what was it now two three hundredth time on television. Uh, so, you know, you had at least a decent match there, but you know, you've seen it before, you'll see it again at some other point as as well. Uh, the other uh, really good portion of the show I liked was uh, the Miz and Dolph Ziggler's uh, IC title rematch. I kind of, I do kind of like their little almost hot potato with the uh, with the IC title between the two of them. You know, you had the Miz cheat the, the night before to win the title, uh, title, and then the next night Dolph Ziggler reverses everything and actually wins it himself. Uh, I also like the whole how uh, how well Damian Sandow is getting to uh, you know try to do the exact same things that uh, the Miz is doing at the exact same time. It's just getting pretty good. They had like a backstage interview uh, during the pre-show that was uh, I found hilarious uh, because you had Miz talking and Damian Sandow pretty much mimicking him word for word. And it, it came off really, it came off good and entertaining in that in that sense. I also like the aspect that you know they had like a little fake title with Damian Sandow in there as well. Uh, the six man tag with Cesaro and Star of Goldust versus uh, the Usos and Sheamus I felt was a good match. It at least keeps those guys together, which I'm kind of which I, I'm kind of glad they're going with at this point for them. Uh, you know. Just on the aspect that I feel those are the uh, those were the best matches from the night before, and you know just keeping them together for the time being is definitely going to be uh, a benefit towards anything. Of course, the Usos will go up against Star and Goldust for a rem for a rematch for the tie titles, um, which they announced for SmackDown. Hopefully, that's not the last of it, and hopefully, we haven't seen the last. And maybe. Hopefully, a better story build between Cesaro and Sheamus here in the near future, leading into hopefully a secondary match. Also, they uh, continued on with the whole Bella, uh, the Bella, uh, you know, feud, and then of course the feud with Paige and AJ as well. They are they're going to continue on with <clears throat> at least what it seems like they're going to continue on with the the Paige AJ feud. The, the, also, another title that they're kind of. You know, you're passing back and forth wins for the title, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because it uh, it's not necessarily playing hot potato with the title because you're not switching it from one person to a completely different person to a completely different person in a real fast session. It's kind of like no one of them can get the advantage. It's like the Dolph Ziggler Miz feud with the, oh, with the title. It's like 
you know, one person wins the wins the uh, title match, and then the next person wins it. You, you, you kind of get that aspect that no one of them has the full advantage in that feud. So it's definitely a nice little uh, change of pace to how they are working the title uh, title feuds for the time being. We'll see how long they actually keep that feud going as well. Um, they did a rematch with Mark Henry and Rusev. It was pretty much the exact same thing from the night before. You, you know, you did the whole uh, Mark, Hendry, Mark Henry's uh, back is injured. He can't really do as much. Uh, but uh, And then, of course, they also had the... Uh, they're doing a little bit more with uh, the Adam Rose and the Bunny segments. Uh, now they're having the Bunny do matches and everything. Uh, it, that one's just quirky and fun. Uh, or maybe not really quirky and fun. I don't, it depends on how you feel about it. I find it a bit hilarious how, how they're doing it with the bunny. I feel almost a little bit bad for the person who has to do their matches inside of the bunny suit itself. But it's kind, it's kind of entertaining. We'll see where they actually go with it and see who they actually reveal who's in the bunny suit, if they're even going to do that down in the future as well. Overall, like I said right at the beginning of the show, uh, it wasn't a horrible Raw, but it wasn't anything good. Uh, it wasn't really anything that good. Um, at least they're keeping certain storylines together, but they were pretty much keeping all the storylines leading into Night of Champions, of course, with the exception of uh, Randy Orton and Chris Jericho, because Jericho is going to be taking his hiatus for a little while. Uh, but other than that, it's pretty much all of the Night of Champions matches that were there, that were there, and plus a few extra things. Of course, a continuation with Bo Dallas and Jack Swagger, what they had been doing from Raw and SmackDown for the weeks before, and the Adam Rose, the Adam Rose segment as well. So, you know, that's my review this week for Monday Night Raw, and I thank you guys for watching.